Hello, Canada. I'm Foster Hewitt. And I'll be doing the play-by-play -play of tonight's key game. With the Soviets moving into a commanding lead in this series, having won three, tied one, and lost one, this sixth game is a must for Canada if they're to win or tie the eight-game series. Brian Conacher is again beside me, and will do the color commentary. Brian, it's do or die tonight. Well, Foster, if Team Canada is to win tonight, or at all in Moscow, they must, through puck control, slow down the tempo of the play. The Soviets are at their physical peak, while Team Canada is still two steps from it, and Canadian puck control is the only way I see Team Canada being able to slow down the play and stick with the Soviets for the full 60 minutes. And Foster, there's no way that Team Canada isn't getting support like they've never had before, even across Canada. 3,000 Canadian people over here are making more noise than 20,000 back home. Really, uh, this is really a thrill again tonight because I thought the uh, first game here, the crowd was tremendous, but the Canadian contingent really outdid themselves on this occasion. They really almost had the light pop. Thank you. 
for the face-off, a number of changes by both teams. Canada has changed four players. They've dropped Frank Mahovlich, Gilbert Perrault, who was dropped and then went home, Tony Esposito and Rod Sealing. They'll be replaced by Ken Dryden in goal, Paul Levard and Berenson. The line of vaults of Harlemov and Mikhailov will start for the Soviets, Clark, Henderson and Ellis for Canada. The Soviets get the draw. Vikolov went in too slowly there and allowed his teammates to cross and make it offside. Plus to the Soviets, they've added five players. A new line of Bodnov, Anison, and Lebedev. Volskov as a right winger and Shatilov as a defenseman. From the face-off, Savard shot it out to make sure it goes right down the ice, goes into the corner, but it hit a Soviet player. It's over on that far side at center, Maltsev. Pass back to Mikulov. Here he comes in front of the goal, lost it. When checked on the play, a pass at center ice is carried over the line. And the Soviet Harlebov was boarded on that play. 
and the play was stopped as the puck went over the board into the crowd. Paul Henderson gave a very effective check to the Soviet right winger there, as opposed to trying to run him right out of the rink. He pinned him against the board, took him out of the play, and then went after the puck. And this will be all important, Bob, through over 60 minutes. They definitely don't want to tire themselves out trying to run at the Soviet players. They have to make a clean check and then get back into the play. Bill Esposito is now going to center ice for Canada. Bart Y.A. is on the right wing as Park and Bergman take over on the defense. Parisi is on the left wing, driving in goal for Canada. They're in the early moments of the first period. No score in the game as the Canadians take it in back to their own goal. Playing a little safely here. A long pass by Park. Goes to center ice and is grabbed off. And knocked right back to center ice as Volkov, the new player for the Soviets, had a chance. Now Luchenko moves up, driving it in and back to the goal. One of the few times they've got rid of the puck. A roller off the board is... Bartwaye feeling to get away. Yeah, it took a long shot. It drives loose. Hot on that one. Down that far wing. Canada attacking in on goal. Park trying to fight his way through. The yeah, action is jumped by Park when he went after him. Looks like this is going to be a rough game. Again, the Soviet player went down. Yakushev is starting out on the left wing. He's one of their stars. He's carried in on the board. They Badrun is bumped against the board. This is going to be a different game. The Canadians are coming out really hitting. And the fans are starting to whistle. The Afton, the defense player, had to Yakushev. He lost it. Bergman bringing it back to center for Canada. Couldn't get over there. Bumped into the Chilean and knocked him flying. How oh, they're really hitting. The Canadian team has come out right off the bat. A long forward pass. Bill White broke it up. Slides back to Bergman. Bergman lobs it, but not out. When it was stopped by Bodnoff. at their kid line out there, but they're changing again. Shadlov on the defense with Vasiliev. Vasiliev played it to the blue line. Kid line move up at center. But the puck went loose. And is up to the blue line, but not out. And the Canadian team didn't clear out of that play. Now Bill White smeared that pass. Overstated the puck, shot it to the left wing. Lebedev couldn't stop his man, but they knocked that puck over the line. Bill White going in for it, playing it back into the opposite corner. Shot on the side and out to center ice. Lebedev trying to go in, was stopped as they made a run at him. Now Bodnov gets that puck back to the blue line where Raquel broke it up. Bill Bear was on the right wing as they clear in. Dennis Hall is on that left side, number 10. Dennis Hall is given a jolt on the board, clearing it over on this side. Bill Bear trying to clear, goes to the passes to the corner. He's covered by Paul Sev. It comes out in front, and Dennis Hall was bumped so he didn't get his shot. Clear pass to Bill White, who's gone into the Soviet zone. It hit the Canadian player, and the Soviets are trying to get that puck out. Shatilov, one of the new defense players, ahead to Mikulov. Mikulov with Har Harlamov trailing, goes into the corner. He's bumped by Berkman. Henderson, rushing back. Again, Rob comes on the ice. They go over the line, offside. But they didn't call it, though, but they whistle in the crowd. Ellis tried to center it out. It's knocked down by Mikulov over to Maltsev. Maltsev closing in. Right in front of the shot. Right the save. A beautiful save on that hard shot that was ankle high. Back up Canada with Ellis passing wide. He's into the corner. Henderson is roaming out in front. Goes over to help. A long shot at foot jack. And the Soviet player, Raglan, was not over. Soviet goal. Here's Henderson coming in. Back to Savard. A shot goes wide. It's over on the far wing. Henderson still trying to get it out as the Canadian team put the pressure on. A long shot right by the goal. Allen fired wide. And left uncovered in front of the net. Arlamov got it out to center right to Mikulov. 
Nikolov took his shot, right. Playing a hot hand, grabbed that one and cleared it to the side. Canadians keep the right in front of their own goal. Knock it on the board. It shot out to the Soviet zone. And it's called for icing. No score in the game. And they play in about five minutes and 30 seconds. This is game six of the Canada-Soviet series from Moscow. From the face-off, the puck is held against the boards in that corner, goes loose, and let's try and get that puck out. It's cleared into the corner again. Bernoye is waiting for a pass, but this comes, and now Berkman on that far side. Flips it out to center ice. Bill Escudito couldn't reach his check. The Apton played it over on that far side. It's the rush down that false cough. Failed to get anywhere in Canada. Come up there, just up there. Volstov was knocked down by a hard check. Yakushev tried to get away. It stopped at center ice. The Canadians come over the line. Phil has the lead of shot. And Petjak stopped it, but it bounced wide in the corner of the net. Foster, I just have to mention, there's a little pushing and shoving goes on there. Phil has the lead There wasn't a whistle. It went almost five minutes without a whistle, and that is amazing. The hockey here is wide open, tremendous effort to stay on side, and so far we have seen a superb hockey game by both teams. The tail is going to face off for Canada, but they're breaking back the face off outside the Soviet blue line. The Soviets are to our right. Canada to the left, no score in the game, and plenty of hard hitting, most of it handed out by the Canadians. Rattel over to Gilbert, who shoots it into the corner, dead as fell on that left wing. The Soviets knock it to the corner, Rattel recovering, Rattel set it right to the Oh, that was close. As Dennis Hall took a swipe at it, then Gilbert cleared on the side, right in front for Gilbert, and his shot was blocked. He broke up the rush again. Soviets finally break up the kid line. Hamilton going up, takes the shot, and the drive was high. It hit the screen. Back to the blue line. Another shot. It hit a leg. It goes wide. Two of them go down. They're going down like nine pins as they hit each other regularly. Slider to Gilbert is stopped. Shatilov got it back to Anderson, intercepted by Park. Got over to Dennis Hall, can't get in there fast enough, and he's jammed on the board by Vasilyev, and they don't wear the horses with their check. Foster, both teams have opened up full steam right off the bat here. We've gone just about seven and a half minutes, and we've seen wide open hockey from the opening period. I must comment on both the goaltenders. Kenny Dryden looks like tonight could be the night he's sharp. He's made a couple of big saves early. Fred Jack stopped a couple of whistling shots. One by Phil Esposito. Soviets playing every man up for this baseball. No score in the game. Seven minutes and 14 seconds played in the first period. Maltsev, number 10. Harlamov on the left of him. As the puck goes into the corner. Stapleton knocked it on the board. Clark with Henderson and Ellis out there for Canada. The Soviets get that puck. Here's a shot wide as... They seem to come up with that puck on frequent turns going into that corner. A forward pass, Clark lobbed it onto Henderson, who's going in. He couldn't get a shot. Clark followed, took a shot, knocked it wide. It's held on the side, goes loose to Raglan. Raglan played it on the right side, doesn't pass to Harlemov. Harlemov goes in with a high shot. Bill White hearing that drive high into the crowd. We saw Bobby Clark do there uh, something that was so important in the game uh, on Friday night when they did manage to get a couple of goals that line is Bobby Clark getting that puck right up the ice as quickly as he can. Paul Henderson, there isn't a player out on this ice surface that can skate any faster than Paul Henderson and he's getting in behind and right there they cause the Soviets some problems. Stapleton is over by the Canadian bench getting 
some information from Harry Sinden. Stables number three. Clark is at center ice, facing off with Walt Simpson. Harlem on 17 was right there, and Bill White goes in back to the goal for Canada to Henderson. Henderson on the left side, clear to Clark. Over to Bill White, a long shot wide. The Gansov goes into the corner, is bumped by Henderson, and then lost the puck to Clark to Henderson, and the drive went across the open goal. Down the left side for Maltez. Over the line, closing in as they back in on a right, but the shot didn't occur. Now Raglan, number five, passed the back of the net, out in front to the blue line. Here's the shot, and again, Dryden grabbed that one and held it for a face-off. There's nearly a mix-up right in front of the Canadian goal. Dryden did the smart thing there, Foster. The Canadian team was running around just a little bit in their end. They were getting a little scrambly. I think he anticipated this. He just said the best thing for me to do is trap the puck, kill the play. With the score, Canada nothing and the Soviets nothing. This is game six from Moscow. A shot goes wide and still in the Canadian zone. Canada get that puck out. Cardoye waiting for a long pass is offside. Got right. Oh, no. Joseph, and Frank Bader are the two West German officials. Foster, that play, even though it was offside, was a terrific move by Phil Esposito. Because if the Soviet defense are worried about someone with Ivan Cornoyer's speed sneaking in behind them, they will then have to play more defensively, and it'll give Canada a better chance to get out of their end. From the face-off, the Soviets get the draw, as they're often have to do. And Gakrashev going down into the corner, 15, played it behind him. They jam for the puck. Shadron lost it, brought back by Bill Esposito. Cornoye on the right, tipped it to the corner, centered it, and a knocked down by Liapkin. He clears ahead to Shadron, and the pass was missed by Volskov. Canadians shoot it in the Soviet zone. Liapkin had the puck bounce behind him. It shot down the ice. It's going right down over the line, and it will be called for icing, and the Soviets oh, will take sorry. advantage to make a change of players and they send their kid line out there with Anderson, Lebedev and Bodnov. Soviets have to be very confident going into this game because they've dropped two of their most experienced defensemen, number two Gustav and number four Kuskin, who is one of the real team leaders of the Soviet squad and they've come back with a lot of their younger players, Shatilov, Bodnev, Anderson and Lebedev. They're all 21 years old. Red Barron is now at center ice for Canada. And Mahovlich, Peter Mahovlich on the left wing. Gilbert on the right. Park is back there with Bergman. Dryden in goal as the puck goes to the side. From the corner, Gilbert shot at the center to Red Berenson. Berenson is skated off by Anderson, 22, who recovered the puck. Tried to clear it out. Gilbert shoots it right back. Red Berenson missed it. Into the corner for Vasiliev. Mahavlich covered him, but didn't stop him. A pass to center ice. Vodnov cleared on the right side. The puck is loose. Anderson waiting for a pass, and it didn't arrive. And there's going to be a penalty against Canada on that play for tripping. And Bergman is going to get the call. With the score, Canada nothing and the Soviets nothing. This is game six from Moscow. Bergman gets the first penalty of the game for tripping at 10 21. The Soviets will have the odd man advantage as Canada with Peter Mahovlich dragged the puck at the Soviet line. Partially stopped, cleared it back to Stapleton, over to Park. Park then shoots it down the ice. Red Berenson out there as Peter Mahovlich is replaced by Ellis. Now Harlebaugh. On the left wing, 17, gets away, passes in front, and Maltsev's shot was dead on. Right making a great save. The Soviets trying to keep it up, 
break for Canada to center Hines. Ellen took a high shot after recovering the puck. Harlemov played the four man rush for the Soviets. The pass moves over on the left side. Luchenko, number three, passes to the other defense to Gantov. Into the corner. A shot over on this wing to Balsev, who missed it. Balsev now has it again. Takes a shot. It hits Park. Here he passed right in front of his own net. He passed instead of shooting. And Canada recovers. There's a break down the far side. Stapleton went racing after a pass from Red Berenson, but was called on the outside. And Berkman nearly jumped over the board. Waving a towel there at that decision. Berkman is really red hot, as you notice. Foster, I think those referees might have realized that if you go back in international hockey, you're allowed to ice the puck. With the score, Canada nothing and the Soviets nothing. This is game six from Moscow. From the face-off, the puck comes back to Lyapkin, and it's called immediately on the uh, drop of the puck. As I was saying, Foster, in international hockey, I think what the mistake was there is that you are allowed to ice the puck on a penalty. In international hockey, you are not allowed to ice the puck, and I think the referee just made a mistake because he thought Bergman maybe was coming back in the ice and it should have been icing. Canadians are still a man short. No score in the game. 8.05 left in the first period as the puck goes in back to the Soviet zone. They're trying to regroup. Led by Lachenko with a long pass over on that right wing. It's back to Volskov who gets it to Lyapkin. A shot is right in front of the goal of Strambo. And Volskov had a chance. Now it's in front again to Lyapkin and Bill White. Stop that one. A break down the far side. This time for Escobedo. Goes right in on goal and falls and knocks the net sideways as the two of them, Lachenko and Phil Escobedo, fell into the net. This is something you'll see a lot in European and international hockey. They do not set their goal on top of uh, about four or six inch pins. They have them just with a spike on the bottom of them. So whenever you do slide into the goal, it's going to come off its mounting. This is to prevent players from getting injured. It's a good safety factor, but it causes a lot of disruption in the play because they come off the pins very easily. 7.32 left in the first period. No score in the game. And it's possibly the most exciting game of the series so far. A long shot. The puck goes rolling off to the side. Where do I try to make the move? It's covered on the board. And Cavito fell down with the Soviet player trying to cover, and it's back at center ice. Soviets still trying. Now the teams are both strength here. Anderson trying with a backhand that went wide. It's back to the goal. Cleared over on the left wing. A rush to center ice. Bill Esposito fired that one. Trudjak caught it. And it's a battle off. Given a jolt by Bill Esposito. Bill Esposito, that's Trudjak. Battle off there with a stick. Esposito's going to get the game. And Esposito certainly uh, all in up over that one. Esposito gets a second penalty for Canada. Esposito going over to the penalty box. Eleven is the uh, time of the second Canadian penalty. Mahovlich and Savard are over there getting the last word on the penalty. Whether there was a misconduct or not, it was hard to say. It looks like the, some of the fans may be ejected over there for some of the uh, strenuous efforts that are going on. I note the police over there. Over by the friendly box, there's Bill Esposito. 
In the meantime, Back of the Soviet goal as the Soviets have the odd man advantage. Red Berenson out there with Mahovlich to try and kill off the penalty. That's Peter Mahovlich. Maltsev going into the corner back of the Canadian. That's centered in front. Harlamov had a shot that was blocked. He's trying it again. Harlamov trying to draw his check. It bounced off the skate and is shot down the ice. Kretschak went out to get it. Luchenko turns in the corner. Pass to Maltsev and hit him. Recovered at the blue line. Vasiliev made a rink-wide pass on the right board. It was offside as that right winger was over the blue line ahead of the pass. Coming up in the first period intermission, Foster, we're going to see how our pitcher and sound gets from Moscow back to you Canadian people. Johnny Esau will talk with one of the hockey wives, and Howie Meeker, of course, will be along to analyze the play. From the face-off, the puck comes back to Harlamov, back to his defenseman, who cleared to Lechenko, three, then back to Vikolov, in front of his own net. Berenson watching him, coming up with a pass that goes to the Canadian defense, and they tap it out at center ice. Another try, Vasiliev, then Maltsev passes on that left wing to Vikolov to Harlamov, a rink-wide pass to the other side. It's Vikolov coming from the wing. Pass to one side of the net. He was checked. Maltsev goes back to the goal. Harlamov back with his pass. Was blocked by Savard. Savard lobbed it. It's not out. Luchenko stopping it. Mahavlik finally dug it out to center ice. And the Soviets come right back only to have Lapointe break it up. Clearing on the left side with Berenson unable to get through. On that far wing, the puck is left there in the Soviet zone. Soviets on the move, clearing a pass to Lachenko, stopped by Clark, who digs it back to his defense. Savard and Lapointe are ragging that puck. Savard goes in front of his own net, cut back again, breaks out at center ice, hanging on to that puck, Shadron finally scooped it over to that open side. Vasiliev went after it. A forward pass to Shadron. Shadron gets it over to Lyapkin. Back again to Polskov. Closing in with a backhand that hit the Canadian player Lapointe. Back to the blue line. Here's a pass. Lyapkin shoots. And it's knocked down. And he broke his stick. And part of it went right into the crowd. It's shot over on the far side. 4.02 left in the period. No score in the game, and Canada have had two penalties. Foster, one of the key things I see out here, and I'm glad to see him playing so well, Serge Savard. There was some talk back in Canada he might not be able to play over here because of the problems he had with one of his feet. But he is back in the game, and he's absolutely critical to Canada type of play they'll have to play tonight because he can control the puck. And when you can control the puck, you can control the play and you can slow it down or speed it up, whichever is necessary. The Soviets still have the odd man advantage. Bill Esposito still in the penalty box. Bergman now shoots it down. Kretschak had to stop it. Mark is out there with them. The puck is given to Yakushev. Yakushev cleared on the right side. Volstov is taken right down on that play, and Bergman drives it down the ice. And Volskov can certainly skate. He's one of the new ones for the Soviets. A pass over on that far side is cleared right back on this wing. It's Lyapkin dropping a pass with Lebedev getting it over on the far side. Back to Lachenko. 
Here's the shot. It hits a defense player park and is cleared down by Mahovlich. Peter Mahovlich. And Anderson steps on the ice. 22 for the Soviets. Bertel is out there for Canada with Mahovlich. The Soviet has the puck in the Canadian zone, clearing it into the corner. It's back of the net. A pass to Yakushev is intercepted. Peter Mahovlich breaks out at center with Rattel, going over the line, closing right in, he shoots! And a great save there by Kretschak. 2.42 left in the first period. Edison got over the Canadian line. He tried to pass to Lebedev, who was squeezed out, and Bergman lobbed it out to center ice. Canada now at full strength. It's a quick rush. Vodnov going over the line, a cleared pass on the left side, the lob is wide, it's back of the net, they scoop it out in front, Dryden covers up, and players are down again, and it's always a Soviet underneath the Canadian player, this time Bergman. Sponsor, the Soviets used their feet so exceptionally well, that puck came out there, the Soviet player knew he couldn't get his stick down, he tried to kick it in, and that's what the fuss was about, Kenny Dryden was right there, smothered the puck, and kill the possible scoring play. This game reminds me of 1955 in Grayfield when the Patriots and Dixon B hammered away at the Soviet team and won five to nothing. It's that kind of a rough and tough tussle. A swift, a rolling puck goes in wide of the goal. Anderson is bumped and taken out of the play, but the Canadians are trying to clear that puck. Gilbert getting it back to Bill White. Is Stapleton cleared out over the line off a leg and Canada take over with Bill White slipping it to the left wing. Dennis Hull, number 10, couldn't get it. Back to center, cleared over the line. Bodnoff rushing in to get the puck. He's trying to center it. He's covered on the play and given a heavy jolt at the same time. A forward to Bill White, Dennis Hull on the left. Here's his shot, watch it. And the drive was wide. Bounces off the boards to center ice. Rattel to Bill White. Bill White to center to Rattel. Over the line, away offside. As Devin Hull was going in, Vasiliev mixing it up with the Canadian player Gilbert, number eight. Dennis Hull was right there, too. A minute and 22 seconds left in the first period. No score in the game. And the goalkeepers are certainly having a, a busy time, both Ken Dryden and Frutjak. Ellis, all ready to go, keeps moving around in circles. It's Clark, Henderson, and Ellis out there now for Canada with Bill White and Stapleton. Balsev, Harlamov, and Vikolov off there, up there for the Soviets. At center ice, the puck is knocked over the line. Henderson trying it again. Cleared it with the help of Clark into the Soviet zone. The puck is knocked out by Bill White as they tried to clear, but he couldn't control it. Maltsev is stopped and shoved around a bit. Zagankov lost it. Ragulin clears it, and Harlamov goes in on that wing. Pass and here's right back. Stapleton right beside him. Canada just about gave away a goal right there. A careless play, a drop pass that Harry Sinden talked about before the game. You just can't do it against the Soviets. Vikulov comes right in, and if it wasn't for a little bit of luck and Ken Dryden being right on the ball, we might have been losing one to nothing. 46 seconds left in the first period. No score in the game. A slider to Dryden. And Dryden just played it very carefully. All set now with the Soviet playing every man up. Buck is taken by Savard on the right wing. Gets it to Ellis to Henderson. Henderson tried to go in. The puck went right to Petjak, and Henderson didn't give up one moment. And Clark was shoved almost into the side of the net. This line is working exceptionally well. It has all throughout the series, but I noticed the second that Clark got the puck, Henderson was yelling. 
And the puck came right up from the course. He got a good chance there. Savard and LaPointe are the defense playing up for Canada. No score in the game. The puck goes to Harlemov, 17. Over the line, Maltsev missed, uh, Vikolov missed his pass. Maltsev was trailing. A bouncer, Kretschak, had it cleared by Raglan, but not out. Henderson couldn't get a shot. The Soviet sent four men up at center ice. Henderson broke it up, went into his own zone, lost the puck, and nearly uh, handed them a great scoring chance on that play. Lack of clearing and getting rid of that puck. It's into the corner, jamming there, and the siren goes to end the first period. And what a first period it was. With the score, Canada nothing and the Soviets nothing. This is game six from Moscow. All set now with the teams warming up very quickly for the start of the second period. And it'll be questionable whether the Canadian team will carry on the heavy hitting or decide to try and uh, do a little finesse going in on that Soviet defense. But the key to this game, to me, I still have to believe is puck control. And although Team Canada played an excellent first period, the heavy hitting might tell over 60 minutes. I hope not, but it could happen that way. So Team Canada, uh, the body's been very effective so far. I just hope it doesn't take its toll as the game progresses. But the uh, Canadian team have suffered as a result of those uh, heavy checks. They've had actually three penalties, two to Esposito on the same call, and Bergman, who was put off for tripping, and Esposito, a, two, a double minor for charging. And they were, they were there's no doubt that uh, Esposito had defeated the uh, Soviet player rather roughly, but it seemed more of a, a question of a cross-check rather than charging. And charging first, there's no doubt about that. There's a look at one of the young players who was inserted into the lineup for tonight's game, number 30, Volskov. The Soviets certainly haven't, Foster, been hesitant to use any and all the players they have on their 35-man roster. They've changed them all around. They've gone with young players, old players, and then they've mixed up lines even. Well, the uh, Soviets are going to start off with Yakushev, Shadron, and Voskov. He's the uh, new addition to this line. He's number 30, and he's quite a speedster. Canadian team have Parisi on the uh, left wing, and Bill Esposito is at center ice for Canada, and the puck goes rolling into the Canadian zone, and it was offside. So the face-off will be at the Canadian blue line. Phil Esposito will take it with Shadron. Barnoye is over there on the right wing, getting in motion. He pulled out to center ice too fast and has to get back into the uh, position. From the face-off, the puck goes in on that right side. Savard on that wing with LaPointe on the defense. Puck rolls towards a Canadian goal. It's knocked into the corner. Shot over on the wing. Here's Lucheco getting a chance, and the drive was high and wide. Martin Waye for Canada made a rink wide pass. Parisi is rushing in to get in and didn't get up there in time. The one thing you might have noticed uh, on that play is that at the back of the boards here around the end zone of the rink, it is not glass, it is a netting. And so when the puck hits it, it has a great tendency to almost catapult back and very often it comes back faster than it hits the, the netting and sometimes the rebounds are very hard to control. Face off will be to the left of Dryden. No score in the game. Early moments of the second period. And LaPointe goes back to the Canadian goal. Shot it on the board but not out. Shadron pass to the corner. They're working in back of the goal. Blocked by Phil Esposito but not cleared out. The Apkin shoots it in, into the corner. It's LaPointe recovering for Canada. Passing ahead on the left wing. Parisi comes down the left side. Left the puck. Here's Cornwallis' shot. It hit a leg. A three-man break for the Soviets. Two on one. Yakushev coming in on the defense. And his shot went wide. As he tried to pick the left corner. Yakushev knocks Cornwallis over. Another drive from the blue line. Score! On the blue line. A long shot. I don't think it was a play. 
like I said, it may have been. We'll have to wait to see what happens on that play. A little scrambly. Canada gets running around a little bit. Dryden really had no chance on this puck. It was very low right along the ice. I don't believe it was deflected. And it caught Dryden back in the net a little bit. He couldn't get his eye on it. The Soviets take a one to nothing lead on a long shot from the point by number 25, Lyapkin. Shot was made from the blue line. This is four. Soviets won. Canada no score. This is game six from Moscow. Goal was scored by Lyapkin, the defense player, who fired it from the blue line. Yakushev got credit for the assist as he played it back to him. It was a long shot that eluded Dryden and gives the Soviet Union a one nothing lead. Now then the Canadian team come closing in. Kretschak stopped that one, and then the puck was hit with a high stick by the Canadian player, and it was called as a result. That type of goal on a, on a goaltender is a real nightmare, Foster, because what a goaltender hopes will happen on a situation like that is he's quite ready to handle the shot from the point, but he wants the traffic cleared out from in front of him so he can get his eyes on it, and I don't believe Dryden never had a chance on that. It was a long shot, about 50 feet, and from the left side, and uh, no one really deflected it. It just went right into the corner. Yakushev got credit for the assist and really made the play possible. It's a long shot. Danny Blair was covered in the corner there. There's going to be a penalty call on that one. Here's a high sticking deal here with Clark uh, getting ready. But nothing developed. Gantoff uh, was in on that with him. 17.51 left in the second period. one nothing for the Soviets. With the score, the Soviets won, and Canada no score. This is game six from Moscow. Penalty to the Soviets on that play. Ragulin gets an interference penalty. Ragulin off for the Soviets, and that's the first Soviet penalty of the game. We have 2.09 played of the second period. A minor penalty, two minutes to Ragolin, the defense player for the Soviets. Already the Canadians have had three penalties there. Two and two to Esposito and one to Bergman. Uh, Ragolin was in the wrong penalty box. He was in the uh, one... Uh, more or less reserved for the Canadians. So he had to get out and move back. Now Canada will have the odd man as Bergman waits for a pass with Park. Park hands the puck into the side. A pass to Phil Esposito was knocked down. Gilbert couldn't, uh, rather Ellis couldn't get it over. He and Henderson are out there trying to take advantage of this uh, penalty. Piccolo centered out in front. It's intercepted by Marlamov. And back to Mikulov, who's going to get a try. Pass to the left wing. They shoot it to the side. And the Soviets immediately take up uh, an attacking stance. Every chance they get when they're a man short. Canada attacking Park. Pass over to Phil Esposito. Going into the corner. Luchenko deflected it back to the net. They squeeze the Gantloff out. Canada recovers. Henderson centers out it. Oh, and Esposito had a direct shot on the net. And Kretschak made the save of the night for the Soviet. Petrov is coming out for the first time with Mihailov for the Soviet. But... Phil Esposito was parked in his favorite spot. 15, 20 out right in the spot area. He let a good shot go. He got good wood on it. And Tret Jack was there to beat him once again. We see Ragulin in the penalty box, and of course, that is the Russian script over the picture. Ready for the face-off. Back to the blue line. Park, pass to the boards on that far wing. Ellis 
trying to get that puck out from the corner. Esposito waiting for the pass. He tried to deflect it and went wide. From the corner, they couldn't shoot it away. Canada with Henderson hitting it over to Park on the far side. Park coming in with a pass. Lost it. The Hyloff is out there. Got racing down the ice as the puck goes to the corner. LaPointe was able to knock it away. LaPointe got it back to the goal to Park. Soviet still a man short. The Hyloff is out there for the first time with Petrov. Puck new shot right in back of the Soviet goal. Cleared out on the right side to race for it. Dryden comes out of his net. Goes back to the goal. Park is chased into the corner. Petrov stopped him. And the Canadian team failed to get past center ice. And Zito let that puck go loose. It's into the corner for the point. Back over on the corner. As Canada starts moving slowly up to the blue line. Some real good forechecking by the Soviets. Dennis Hull, number 10 for Canada. Nearly lost it there. He did. It goes loose and Dryden. Shot it against the boards. The Canadian team break out. A pass to Dennis Hull on the left wing. Phil Esposito couldn't get a try as it's intercepted. Shot over on the wing and Park failed to block his man. He blocked the man but had to go back after the puck. Park shot it out and down the ice. Leapkin goes into the corner to shoot it out. Jakushev pass. Here's Shadron passing back and he stopped. Down the first hill there at center. Over the line. The shot hit the defenseman. Another chance for Gilbert. A shot by not. Another one. The score! Canada has tied it up. Patel was in on that. Canada tied the score from a scramble. And Phil Esposito was right in on top of the goalkeeper. I believe it's Dennis Hall who gets the goal here. And he picks the rebound right out of the air. Throws it right up on the top of the net. A beautiful goal by Dennis Hall. So it's right in the right position. He anticipated the rebound and came out to it. He picked it up in the air and batted it into the top of the net. Canada's right back into the game. We can see this developing out of the end zone. Rod Gilbert, good puck control up the right-hand side. His shot is blocked. Now, Paul comes out of nowhere, throws it up top. Good goal for Canada. They're on their way again at center ice. Soviet at full strength. A one-all tie. As they jam against the board, Dennis Hall getting credit for the goal. Phil Esposito is lying on the goalkeeper. Now a break at center ice. Mark Valle goes tearing after it. Goes into the corner. Pass right front. And the Canadian player fell as he tried to get the pass. Down the, for Lebedev. Over on the left side of shot and tried to knock that down. Mark Valle playing it over on the wing to Red Berenson. His pass is intercepted. Pat Stapleton shoots it up at center ice and it's recovered by Lebedev who's stopped by Red Berenson. Parise to Red Berenson. Going back to the net. Lebedev was knocked over. Here's a chance. A shot from the blue line was blocked by here's Stapleton getting it away. It's back to the net. Berenson is in the score by Valle. Got it in from Red Berenson. and Berenson. And two of the three have been added starters. Now then Canada coming up. It's good to go! Right hand corner with a low shot. That's Fred 
contact never expected. A two goal lead, three to one for Canada. Here the Canadians come roaring in again. Henderson was right in there, put together shot on goal. By the turn of events with the Canadian bench standing up, really worked up. Segundov was offside, going in over the line. Well, the scoring was Henderson, Bernoye from Berenson, and then Henderson on a long shot after the Soviets had taken the lead. So Canada's come back with three goals in about a minute and a half. It's interesting, Foster, in the first few minutes there when Canada had the power play advantage, they didn't seem to be able to keep the puck. The passes were off, and then the game opened wide open, and Canada's now banged in three quick goals. Three to one for Canada, two goal leads after the Soviets had opened the scoring. 12.48 now, remaining in the second period. Chadron takes a long drive at the Canadian goal and drives, grabs it off the board. And the Soviet fans are a bit dumbfounded after that turn of events. And a very quick one at last, similar to the Soviet effort in the last period against Canada in the first game here. The face off, the puck comes all the way back to center ice. Cleared pass on the right wing over the line. That run is watched by Patel. Slider comes to the blue line. Here's a long shot wide on the swing. Cadron again recovers the puck. That zigzag passing play as the Canadians in trouble. The African pass on the wing. It rolls off to the side. It's a race for the puck and it is knocked out to center ice. Denisal out there with Gilbert and Rattel. A long drive wide of the Canadian goal. Puck goes back to the net. Point lost and it comes right in front. Here's a chance. And the shot hit a leg and went to the corner. They bump into the corner. Canada recovers. The Jenko bumps Dennis Hull. And Liapkin goes back to get the puck 25. The center ice on a change for the Soviets. And a press player was stopped on that move. And they start shoving. Cecilia is doing some shoving in the corner there. The referee gets in between the two. And that nearly started something. Likely they'll be penalty. With the score, Canada three and the Soviets one. This is game six from Moscow. The point is Vasiliev off together, and they'll play five aside, three to one for Canada. In this second period, 11-17 left in the period. The puck is into the corner. Sagankov shoots it back of the goal, goes after it. Number seven, played it up to the blue line. The center ice, Anderson, tried to go in, lost it. Bill Esposito comes right back with a long pass. It's a backhand to Guardoye, and it's called on the offside. And the crowd are getting a bit frantic on some of these calls, but they're fairly close. We might mention here that when the Soviets don't like something over in Europe here, all over Europe and uh, the Soviet Union, they whistle, and it can get sometimes so shrill you can hardly hear yourself think. It's certainly very penetrating, and uh, it makes a terrific droning noise. There's Bergman, number two for Canada. And Clark is going out there with Henderson to try and kill off this penalty along with the there's five aside. Soviets recover the faceoff, try to go in on the defense. Bergman tapped it out. Henderson lost it. Harlamov is knocked down by Bergman and Bergman was particular how he handled him. Cleared pass to Clark who turns at the blue line. Clark is picking his way out at center ice. Lob one into the corner. Sugankov Shoots it back to the net. Raglan is waiting for a pass, but it comes up to the blue line of center. 
and a shot right back into the Soviet zone. Ragulan going after it, but Canada called for icing as a result of that cleared pass. 10-22 left in the second period, 3-1, to one. and there's the penalty box, Canadian bench rather, Harry Sinden standing back of it. The referee is speaking to the two players facing off, and the puck is knocked down. The Gansoff knocked it ahead with his glove. The whistle blows, but it's awfully hard to hear it with the crowd noise as well as the whistling. Five thirteen was the time of the Dennis Hull goal. Six twenty-one was the time of the Cornwallie goal from Berenson. And uh, six thirty-six was the Henderson goal. Dennis Hull was goal was unassisted, as was Henderson, which was a fairly long shot. The Afton scored from Yakushev for the Soviets, the first score of the, of the game, and at 2-12, all the scoring in the second period. 3-1 for Canada, as the puck goes back to Ragulan, number five. They're five aside, both teams a man short. Soviet moves to the attack at center ice. Harlamov passes back. Here's a roller in front, a shot. Knocked down by Bergman, who fell in front of it. And there's going to be a penalty, I believe, on this one. Here's a mix-up. And the uh, Soviet player shoved a bit. Now Bergman goes over to the Soviet player, puts the uh, threatened of a bit at Harlamov and Bergman. Well, that nearly started something. And if they don't understand English, it doesn't really mean whatever they're saying. But they're cooling them out. But there'll be penalties as a result of that. We'll see whether it's just Bergman or a player from each team. Fever, this game is reaching a fever pitch, and they're really hitting each other hard. Tempers are flaring at every opportunity. Harlamov comes over to the Soviet bench and uh, seems to be uh, rather exhausted from whatever check he took. They're standing around as if they're waiting for something to happen, but it's finally Clark that is going over. Berkman did all the uh, shoving after, but only as a result of what happened apparently to Clark. So Clark gets the gate. There's no Soviet penalty. So Clark is off and Canada will play four men to five. Basilia, LaPointe, and Clark are in the penalty box. Well, Bergman didn't even get a penalty for doing the shoving that he did. But that was all as a result of Clark's mix-up. Canada playing four men to five. Now the referee is going over to the penalty box. Apparently there's a fair amount of confusion as to what it's all about. Harry Sinden's asking Bill Estimino to try and clear it up. A misconduct penalty was given, as well as the minor penalty to Clark for slashing. We know one thing, Foster, that the referee obviously can speak English. So it's a, a ten-minute misconduct to Clark, as well as the minor. And he's a valuable man to have off for that period of time. And the Canadian team will have their troubles while they're playing two men short. The Soviets won. As a result, Cordoye is going over there to come back on when the uh, Clark two-minute slashing penalty is over. From the face-off, Phil Esposito carries in back of his own goal. 
The puck is back of the net to Pat Stapleton, who drives it off the boards and down the ice. The Gansoff, number seven, going back to get it. Out there with Lachenko. Petrov is on one side. Here's the puck up in center. The Soviets are at full strength. The puck goes to Volsev. Off to the side. They jam into the corner. The Soviets drop, lost it. Lachenko's drive went way up into the crowd. Now they're claiming that the Soviet player came on before he should have. The time isn't up. He has seconds left. And uh, that's the result of all this mix-up. They're trying to find out what's going on. And it's Bill Esposito over there at the penalty box. As Canada now two men short, the Soviet at full strength. I can only say one thing, Foster, about all of this. From experience, you're wasting your time and a lot of anxiety by trying to argue with the referee. Canada would be better at this stage just to settle down, accept what has happened, and get back in this hockey game because right now... The Soviets are trying to, this is working to their advantage more than this the Canadians, if the Canadians are getting upset about these penalties and so on. You can't do anything about it, just play hockey. And they face off, the puck is shot down the ice. Canada, a man short, Soviet at full strength. The misconduct is being served now. Mihailov coming in on the right wing. Petrov is in front. A pass back to the blue lines again. Cause shot is stopped by Red Berenson, who breaks away up over the line. He's ahead. Here's a shot. And Kutchak made a good save on Red Berenson, who made a real bid there for a scoring play. 3-1 to one for Canada. Canada, a man short. The puck is carried in back to the goal. The puck rolls off to the side. The Soviet recover, only to have Peter Mahovlich shoot it out off his leg to center ice. Lachenko cleared it over the line. Bill White took his man out. Stapleton bumped into Harlamov, knocked him down, and made sure he stayed down. Well, Team Canada certainly respects Harlamov because they're giving him a lot of attention tonight. Every time they get a chance, they're taking him for a rough ride along the board. And there's no question that he's one of their outstanding players, and you have to pay close attention to him whenever he's on the ice. Canada still a man short. Soviets at full strength. So they didn't play two men short for very long. Puck goes loose to one side. Pat Stapleton shot around on the board. Goes to center ice. Again, Kov cleared it back to Mihailov over on the left side. A slider goes to Mihailov. He's knocked over. The pass comes to Sagankov. To Harlamov. Checked by Stapleton. Another try for Harlamov. Clearing it on the wing. Here's a shot by Lachenko that hit a skate. And it'll recover and break out to center ice. Deep Mahavlis was hooked on the play. Cleared over on the right wing. Stapleton breaks it up. Peter Mahavlis goes over on the far side. Got it out and was knocked down. 7.38 left in the second period. Canada leading 3-1 to one as Barnoye tried to come down that right side and the puck went hopping over the board into the crowd. Foster, I've never seen checking as, as tough as what's going on out there right now. They're both giving and taking it. I saw Harlamov skating into the center. Peter Mahavis decked him with an elbow that I've never seen. And then right after that, Harlamov came right back and knocked Mahavis down. They're both giving it and taking it. And it's tough out in that ice. You can hear the Canadian rotors really hooping it up. Up goes to Lachenko. Over on this right side to Volskov. He's at center ice. Weaving Akershev goes over the line from the corner. Goes back to the net, centered in front, and goes to the blue line. A long shot is wide. Soviet still putting the pressure on. Dennis Hall failed to cover his man. Finally cleared it on the side. He shoved around a bit. Lyapkin goes in to clear it back to the net. Yakushev is watched by Savard. Dragged on the board. Three Canadians break out at center. Eyes for Shell. Over to Dennis Hall, and it's called on the outside. And the Canadian bench goes wild on that call. But they're really upset. And uh, the players are going right ahead as if nothing happened. Foster, there's absolutely no way that could have been offside because Jean Rattel was 10 feet over the blue line before he made the pass. 
and it was after he made the pass that he called Dennis Hall offside. The puck slides to center ice, knocked against the board. Lechenko failed to get very far. He had a hold of Rattel as he was stopped. The Afghan at the Soviet blue line, passing Yakushev. He's the dangerous player, passing on the wing. Here's the shot right on, and Dryden covered up on both stops. Hard drive that was low, and he went down on his knees to cover. More chances. You keep an eye on the Soviet players when they do come in. Volkov had no idea where the puck was. He came up into his feet, but they are so adept with their feet that he brought the puck. He brought the puck right up to his up to his uh, stick, and then got a good shot on Ken Dryden, who came up with a big save. Canada leading three to one. 6.25 left of the second period. They've shown no sign of weakening under the terrific pressure and hard-hitting Savard. Lobbed one back to the Soviet blue line. It's cleared right up the kid line out there. Anderson going in, weaving a bit, centered it, and it's deflected out to center ice. This is that anderson lebedev bodnow line. Third pass over on the right side to Lebedev. Intercepted. Bernoye pass to Phil Esposito who missed it. It's cleared around back to the goal. Slides back to the net. Vasiliev cleared it out and Bergman got back and hit the referee. Phil Esposito covered up, getting it over to Bergman. Bergman going slowly. Lobbed it to center ice. Now it's up over the line. Parisi passed behind him, and Cardoye had to go back and get it. Cardoye passed it over the line. It deflected, recovered by the Soviets with a long pass by Shatilov. Knocked down. Shatilov hasn't seen a great deal of action. A pass to Parisi on this left wing. He fights for it, clearing it around into the corner. It's still in there. Parisi tried to pin his bat against the board. Bill Esposito made sure he did. And that ended the play. That was Esposito that put the finishing touches on that play. And the reserves keep coming out to 4.52 left in the second period. Canada leading 3-1. Scoring three fast goals in about a minute and 15 seconds approximately. That came after the Soviets had opened the scoring at 2-12. We have been from Yakushin. Dennis Hull, Fernwaye, and Henderson scoring for Canada in this second period. Buck is out to the Soviet blue line and center ice. Had stabled and cleared it back. The Gamkov shot it and Bill White blocked it. Red Berenson, 15. Weaving, shot it over the line. Goes back to the net into the corner, and he was bumped into the board. Red Barrett tried to get it to Henderson after Ellis had bumped his man. The Soviets come down the right wing, Baltsev closing in, a shot, and it bounced off Dryden and went wide of the corner of the net. The Gankov fed it into the corner. They're trying to pass it over onto that far side. Ellis is there to tap it out to Red Berenson. One man back, but Henderson, the shot is right on. Kretschak, way out of the net, covered that. Henderson failed to cover his man. Soviet break out to the blue line. Moscow cleared on the right side. Harlamov trying to come in. Was stopped, was back to the blue line. A shot, and it dribbled off the leg wide. Bill White coming from the side, lobbed it over onto the right wing. Ragulin stopped it, and Mikulov is in possession, number 18. Mikulov took a high dive, and the referee didn't pay any attention. Puck is shot into the corner, the Canadians and the Soviets start changing on the goal. 3.20 left in the second period, 3-1 to one for Canada. Rattel out there with Dennis Hull, and a pass over on this right side. Volskov was partially stopped by Stapledon and dragged down. The Gansoff is forced into the corner. The Canadians keep going. Here's a penalty for slashing. And Dennis Howell is going to get the call. 
Dennis Howe off for slashing. And the Canadians are still walking into penalties. Dennis Hull was slashing on that play. And it's 1702. Rather, in 1702, I think it is. Bobby Clark off now. Uh, Canada will have to, uh, and Dennis Hall. Uh, Clark, of course, uh, they're not a, a man short with Clark off. But there's two minutes and 58 seconds left to go in this period, Foster. And Team Canada now will be under a tremendous amount of pressure from the Soviets because they'll want to get back in this game before this period's over. And they face off. Here's a shot deflected. Yakushev recovers. They're getting that pattern. Play right in front of the goal. And But the Soviet within one goal of Canada by coming in front of the net and scoring on that play with the help of Shadron. That's what happens when you get a penalty against them. They are great opportunists. They came right in off the face-off. They established quick control and they got one good scoring chance and they made sure. Partial deflection by Gary Bergman and went up over his shoulder. Dryden didn't have much of a chance on it because he had already gone down and it went up into the top of the net. Yes, it's Yakushev from Shadron making it 3 2 now for Canada. A pass on the left side was offside, and the Canadian bench nearly goes crazy on that ball. They're certainly doing some funny work out there, these officials on the offside. Foster, again, I can only emphasize that Team Canada has to relax. They have to stop worrying about it, because I can assure them it's not going to change by talking to the referee, and all you're going to do is spend a lot of energy for nothing. Now, John Ferguson's down there. He's getting in the act with Mr. Campala. And really, they're going to get themselves into more trouble by making a scene about it than they are if they just ignored it. Go out there and play good hockey because Team Canada, they've got the game well in control. And if they play their game, they're going to win it. And the leading, 3-2. Pumped his shot into the corner. It's still loose. Pernoye tried to kick it back to the goal. The Soviet trying to get out, failed when Phil Esposito stopped his man. Mihailov shoots it off and into the corner. Ragulin clears it. Now it looks like a big penalty. Henderson was yelling at the referee, whatever it was. Uh, he obviously said something. And this game is building up. I hope there are no incidents in this game. But they're certainly threatening. It was Henderson, the assistant coach, that uh, will likely result in a bench penalty. Well, I can say there that as we saw Raglan in his cut now under his right eye, there's John Ferguson who stood up on many times and he uh, was mosing off at the referee and it's going to cost Canada with a bench penalty. But Raglan now, there might be a five-minute penalty or a major penalty to Phil Esposito. He had Raglan all lined up in the end. Regulin saw the check coming at the last moment. He decked Esposito, but Esposito had his stick way up, and he's going to be gone, I'm sure, for five minutes on a major penalty for cutting Alexander Regulin. And there's a very disgusted Phil Esposito, but Esposito walked right into that penalty, Foster. He's got no one to blame but himself. And the very thrill whistles that just ring in this drink, they just about feel like someone's driving a nail into your head. Raglan is being patched up on the bench, and uh, about five of them are working on him as if he had really been uh, given the work. If Canada loses their composure right here, they could blow the whole game, 
with two minutes and 14 seconds to go in the second period. They are winning three to two, and if they lose their professional composure right here, they could get themselves in trouble. They just might not be able to get out of. They have to play it cool. We start off Foster with a bench minor. other side is almost instantaneous there's no way you're going to win with the referee and the best thing to do is just to stay away from them as much as you can because they're not going to get a break if they try to intimidate the referee as John Ferguson tried to do there he was mouthing off at the at the referee and he just turned around and gave Canada a two-minute penalty and all that's going to do is hurt Team Canada they have to get out of this period with this goal lead and they're going to have to collect their composure if they intend to do it Canada's leading 3-2, and these uh, calls are really getting the go to the Canadian team. Dryden is going back into the net, so oh, these will be hectic minutes, closing minutes, 2.14 left in the second period, Petrov and Mihailov who haven't seen much action are out there for the Soviet, they have a full team. Canada, two men short. Peter Mahomet's got the draw back to Park. Park carries it to his own line. It's offside in there, but they finally called it. And the Canadian rooters set up a real howl there of jubilation when he called the offside. The Canadians are certainly standing in behind the team because the Russians, there's many more of them here, and they're yelling, shy boo, shy boo. From the face-off, Peter Mahovlich recovered and shot it down the ice. Lyapkin is going back to get it for the Soviet. Mihailov turns with him. Lyapkin over to Mihailov on that left wing. Mihailov at center. Over the line, a two-man advantage for the Soviet. A shot goes back to the net. Petrov, 16, working from the corner. Pass to the blue line to Lechenko. Another pass over on the far wing. of pass in front is knocked to the side. Lyapkin has it. Cleared it over to Lechenko. Lechenko faked the shot. Passed it to the wing. And to the side, a shot. And it hit the side of the net. Shot has gone in the goal, but it hit the side. And that, the uh, Soviets are claiming it went in the net, but uh, not much question, it, it hit the outside. Tremendous amount of pressure here from the Soviets. You see Harlamov parked right on Dryden's doorstep. Good puck control by the Soviets. Harlamov missed the goal on the short side. He had Dryden beaten, but he hits the side of the net with a shot. Foster, I can only say here that it is a tremendous feat by Canada if they can kill off this two-man penalty because there is so much ice out there to cover. And the Soviets are putting tremendous pressure on through good puck control. Four to six uh, in manpower, with the Soviets having a two-man advantage. The puck comes back, comes back to Lechenko. He lost it, and he tried to pass it, and it came right back to center ice. That was an odd one. Puck slides to center. Canada playing four men to six. Petrov moving in on that left side into the corner. Petrov still has it, trying to draw his check and hit a skate. A high lob, 13 in the corner. He's coming out in front of Lechenko. Here's the shot. And the drive was high. Bounced off the screen. Cleared back to the blue line to Lechenko. Out to the far side. Back to Lechenko. The shot. And drive near that one off to the wing. The goalkeeper's lost his stick. He finally got it. And Canada shoots it down the ice. But Harlamov cleared it to the Canadian player. 
Gretel, who shot it down the ice. Soviet coming again. Petrov over the line. Into the corner. Setters out to Mihailov. Back to the blue line. A fake shot. He fakes it again. Pass to Lachenko. Lachenko pulled away when Bergman gets a chance. And another Yashikov missed with his pass. Back to Lachenko again. Here's a shot. Line to the net. Canada have a man back on the ice. They're only one man short. And Dryden went down to cover. So that the Canadian team are only one man short. Kenny Dryden was under unbelievable pressure there. He went to poke check one of the Soviet players who pulled his stick out of his hand unintentionally and went into the corner. And it was Bergman's alert play that got him the stick back because Dryden was trying to spin that hand without a stick in his hand. Five seconds remaining in the second period in a foreign struggle here. Canada leading three to two, but being at the disadvantage many times in this game, playing men short. Petrov ready for the faceoff, dropped it, and it's knocked away by LaPointe. It's the puck goes right down the ice, the tire is down, and that's the end of a foreign Second period of hockey that had just about everything in the book. With the score, Canada 3 and the Soviets 2. This is Game 6 from Moscow. The uh, Soviets are on the ice, but the Canadian team hasn't appeared as yet. In that, there was no scoring in the first period. The Soviets outshot Canada 12 as 12-7. And there were two penalties to Canada. Bergman and Esposito got a double minor. In the second period, Lyapkin opened the scoring from Yakushev at 1-12 of the second period. 5-13, it was Dennis Hall who tied it up. At 6-21, Cornwallier put the Canadians one up. Berenson, I don't think, has officially an assist, but he certainly set the play up. And at 6-36, Henderson scored on a fairly long shot, and Canada led 3-1. Then penalties really crept into the act. And finally at 17-12, Yakushev brought the Soviets within one goal, getting an assist from Shadron. It's a very interesting point that in the game so far, in the first two periods, Canada has had 29 minutes in penalties to only four to the Soviets. And the feeling is running extremely high we hope there will be no incidents, but the way the two officials are performing, I'm afraid they're uh, getting the fans and the players worked into a fever pitch. But it's been a matter of great handicap to the Canadian team running, uh, playing short-handed so many times. We can see there's a look at the uh, backup goalie for the Soviets, Pushkov. And this is his first chance even to sit on the bench in an international hockey game. He's one of their younger goalies. And he's probably seeing a lot of things tonight that he never believed took place in hockey. There's Alexander Yakushev giving, giving their goaltender to screen right. Fred Jack some practice. The Soviets are out on the ice, as are the referees, and they're just sort of skating around. Uh, waiting for our Team Canada to make their appearance. With the score, Canada 3 and the Soviets 2. This is Game 6 from Moscow. The question, Foster, all through that second uh, period intermission is... Can Canada hold on to beat the Soviets? My attitude has to be, can Canada in this third period take the game to the Soviets? Go get a couple of more goals. Skate away from them. Don't try to hang on. Because if you hang on over the period of 20 minutes, the Soviets will get to you. The Canadian team, rather late in coming out, are out on the ice now. And uh, at the moment, uh, Clark is speaking to the referee who who is uh, German, so whether he can speak English or not, I don't know, but from indication, it looks as if he could. Certainly, uh, one of them must have understood English when they heard uh, 
John Henderson from the boards and handed out a bench penalty. So Canada have two men in the penalty box. Red Berenson is going to come out for the face-off. Canada's a man short. That's the misconduct, of course, uh, Clark. And he's a valuable man to be out of the lineup for that length of time. For the face-off, Canada shoots the puck down the ice. The Soviets are to our right. Canada to the left. Now Harlamov cleared over on that right side to Vikolov. Vikolov going in, fell, went after the puck. Dryden played it into the corner. Harlamov centered it out, and Dryden grabbed it with Vikolov standing in front of the Canadian goal. The first thing that Team Canada has to do at the start of this period, they're going to be short for another 2 minutes and 25 seconds due to that major penalty of 5 minutes to Phil Esposito. They have to get through the penalty first. From the face-off, the puck is cleared to the side. It's John Ferguson, of course, I was referring to. I don't know how I said John Henderson. But it's John Ferguson who was the assistant coach for the Canadian team who was uh, caught uh, saying too much to the referee and as a result, the bench penalty. There's a look at a broadcast uh, set up right down at ice level. From the face-off, the puck is near the Canadian goal. Red Berenson, with the help of Peter Mahovlich, cleared it down the ice. Lachenko going back to get it. Dropped a pass to Harlamov. Harlamov cleared it, and it's intercepted by Berenson. Here's a shot! Petschak knocked that down with his glove. Mikulov is covered by Berenson, who sticks with him, played it back to the defense, and they shot it down the ice. Canada still a man short as Luchenko went in front of his net, playing it over to Mikulov. Mikulov at center, going over the line. Still has it, played it back to Luchenko. Out in front, the hands off, and the drive went in back of the net. And right deflected that one, and it was a hard shot. That was a fantastic save by Ken Dryden because Zagankov, probably the Soviet's most uh, dangerous defenseman, when he gets the puck inside your blue line, he has a tremendous shot. He walks right into the key scoring area at the top of the slot and, and let a high-rising shot go. The Dryden got his glove on it, came back off the screen, and he stopped it on top of the net. John Ferguson is now sitting down, and he's cooled out quite considerably since that last outburst. Puck is back at center, right back into the Soviet zone, and it's Luchenko turning for the Soviets, coming up now with Waltschow. Milamov goes in on the side, passes it back to the blue line. Here's a shot by Lyatkin, and it went wide. Lyatkin had his try, and it in possession, the point. Brings it out over the line, taps it back to Savard. Savard rags the puck. Still has it. Savard now comes to center. Savard over the line. Made the pass to Henderson, and the pass went astray. He and Ellis are out trying to kill off the penalty. The Soviets send four men up at center ice. Mihailov goes in on the defense, stopped. Recovered by LaPointe with Savard. Savard turning. Savard. Turning at center ice, lobbed it over the line. Savard doing great defensive work there with the help of LaPointe. Another long pass on the right side on a change of players. Petrov was unable to get the pass. Coming in on the right side, Berenson will stop. Volkov weaving in on the Canadian defense. A high left to Volkov goes wide behind the net. Petrov couldn't recover. Red Berenson shoots it down the ice. Yakushev is coming on for the Soviet. Here the penalty is up for Canada. And Canada won't break. The puck is on the far side. Phil Esposito just getting on after serving a major. Soviet returning to center ice. Couldn't get past center. Yak uh, Yakushev was waiting for the pass that didn't come. Dad runs. Over to Anderson, who's pinned against the board. He centered it and comes to this right wing. Dennis Hull down the right side. Made the pass to Raquel, and he was knocked over by Vasilia. A three-man race for the Soviet. One man back. They're right in a goal. And the shot went wide as he planned on him. Another shot went wide as the Soviet. 
Columbia stormed to the attack. They jammed to the blue line. Over to the far wing to Lefka to drive it right and stop that. It's Elliott fired it wide. It's behind the net. Then you see settled down. Got it out to center. Dennis Hull to Esposito. Down the right wing to Cornwallier. Centered out in front. No one is there. Pat Stable that drives it right back in the Soviet zone. Clearing pass. The Soviet shoot it down the ice. And it's called for icing. They have 15-50 left in the third period. Of course, they have a 10-minute game to end. After the first 10 minutes, Third period is divided into two 10 minute periods. And the Canadian fans are really whooping it up. Bill White is out there now with Pat Stapleton, Clark, Anderson, and Ellis for the Canadian team. Ragolan goes in back with the goal. He's the one that got flipped by Phil Esposito. It doesn't seem to be much wrong with him. As he comes up with Malkstab and he stopped there. But the Canadian team really fighting in there. A long shot. Sekiak deflected that one. And the faceoff is going to be to the right. On the Soviet goal. And you hear that Canadian group really hoop it up. I think this has to be our best offensive line with Bobby Clark at center and Paul Henderson and Ronnie Ellis on the wing. From the face-off, the puck goes back to the goal. From the corner, a slider goes down the ice. And it's called for icing. And the Soviet team, being hard-pressed by close checking, are uh, not quite as letter perfect with their passing play. There's the Gansoff, number seven. For the Soviet, one of the strong defense players. A long pass to Mikulov. He's going in on the defense, couldn't control the puck. Henderson tipped it off Clark to center ice. Ragulin played it over to Harlamov. Harlamov cleared it back at center. 3 to 2 for Canada. 14.56 left in the last period as Harlamov was stopped on that far wing by Clark. Puck is to the Soviet line. The Gansoff is covered, and he couldn't move an inch. And it's a stunt game, but Ellis right in a goal! And the shot went wide. Great try. Ellis fighting for that puck. Goes back to the net. Henderson waiting in front. Ellis is upset on the play. The forward to Mikulov, to Harlamov on the left wing. He passes out to Ragulin. Ragulin waits. Back to the blue line is the Gansoff. The shot is deflected high up into the crowd and the reserve go pouring over the board. 14-14 left in the third period. 3-2 to two for Canada. There we see Frank Mahovitz behind the Team Canada bench cheering his teammates on in this all-important hockey game. The face-off is going to be inside the Canadian line. Canada leading 3-2. Having scored three goals in the second period in a minute and 23 seconds. At center right, the Soviets carry it over the line. But it was a weak effort by Shatilov, who's used sparingly. A roller comes to center ice. Petrov kicked it away, and Savard got it over onto the far wing. They close into the corner, back of the net. It's intercepted by Esposito. Here's a shot! And that drive went wide. And Parisi was in front of the net. The Soviets come right back. The pass rolls off the side. Still recover. Petrov handing it right back to Parisi. He clears to Cornwallier. Over on that left side. A race for the puck, and it went over the line. It's called for icing. I can't say enough about the work of Serge Savard out there. 
There is no way that Savard could be in top shape because he missed almost a week. He missed the uh, the portion of the trip in uh, in Sweden, and he comes out here, and the one thing that he can do so well, and it's so critical to Team Canada, is whenever he's on the ice, he controls the puck, and he can slow the play down. Three minutes and 26 seconds left in the first half of the third period. Three to two, Canada leading. The puck is over on the far side. Dennis Hall failed to clear it out. The check goes fast, is intercepted. Rattel cleared to Dennis Hall, it was bumped, then passes to center ice. Gilbert cutting back. Gilbert laid it over at center. Liapkin intercepts. They have four men up. A long shot. Dryden caught it. And Dryden has been very steady in this game. Bergman ahead to Gilbert. Over to Dennis Hall. Offside. And there wasn't any doubt about that one. Face off is going to be at the Canadian blue line. 2.53 remaining of the first half. Dennis Hall. Number 10, Canada leading 3-2. And they face off, the puck comes over to the side. It rolls out to center ice. The Soviet trying to put on pressure at every move. Chadron gets that puck over the line. Passes back to the blue line. The action missed it. It's a result. Canada break out three strong with Park going in on the right side. And missed on the, on the short side. Lachenko cleared to the corner. Canada get another chance. A drill shot was deflected to the other side. Yakushev is stopped before he can get out by Rattel. Into Gilbert. Gilbert is bumped against the board. The Aston had it covered. And the play is stopped. And the face-off is going to be to the left of the Soviet goal. 3-2 for Canada. Two minutes and nine seconds remaining. And Gilbert, eight. The take goal, three for the Soviet. Some hard work there by Jean Rattel. Checking fiercely, staying on top of the puck. They finally trap it against the board. From the face-off, Clark out there now with Henderson and Ellis. Bill White and Stapleton. Clark White for that puck. He's grabbed by on the play. And so, Ragolin grabbed at him. Then Ellis goes after Ragolin. And Bill White is right there, too. And Ragolin just grabbed Clark and pulled him down. I can understand Bill White and, of course, the Team Santa players. They are so intense in this game. I can understand them being uptight, being very anxious, being upset about that, but Canada must stay on the ice. From the face-off, the puck goes into the corner. Ragland held his stick up as Henderson went in to check him. Here's Bill White getting a shot. It rolled right by to the goal. There's a deflected by Vasilia. Clark trying to dig it out, and it went into the crowd. And the face-off is to the right on Kruciak with Canada leading 3-2. Harry Sinden is pacing up and down. John Ferguson is still sitting on his chair by the bench at the other end. Ready for the face-off in the Soviet zone. A minute 38 seconds left in the first half of the third period. 11.38 on the total. The puck is kicked over on that far side to Mihailov, and the Canadians recovered by a cleared pass for Nwaye, letting it out as Petrov failed to follow through. Down the right side for Nwaye. Phil Esposito going in on that far side. is jammed against the board. Parisi's in there trying to help him out. Phil Esposito to Nwaye. Nwaye centers and intercepted. Soviets come right back. On the right wing, Volkov got it to Petrov, and shot! It was knocked off to the wing, as the defense are blocking beautifully. Staple has stopped that one. Now it's Bernoulli going in alone. Went back to the net, trying to bring it up from back of the goal, but was stopped by Shadlow. Another great effort by my...
Ivan Cornwinger with a good burst of speed comes in, makes a good move. Notice how he gets the defenseman to close his legs, then he puts the square spurt on, goes around him, tries to come right around the net and jam it in the far side. Tretjak gets back and traps it against the net. 47 seconds remaining before the first half of this third period. Canada still leading 3-1. There's no score in the first period. Soviets scored first in the second. And it came back to three. And then the Soviets got one back before the period ended. The Afghans plays that puck over to Shadron with Anderson. And they're pouring the speed in the Canadian team. It falls for Icy. And the Canadian squad are giving it a real top-notch effort here tonight. They've given everything so far and have been the better team. There's no question, Foster, that Team Canada to this point in the game have played an absolutely perfect hockey game. They've lost their composure at times, but they've collected it, and they're playing sound, solid hockey right now. From the face-off, Rattel is now at center ice with Peter Mahovlich and Gilbert. At center ice, the Apkin makes a rink-wide pass. Luchenko carries it over the line. Addison had a shot, and Dryden played it off to the wing. Back to the blue line again. That pattern play of the Soviets causing trouble as the bar goes in back of the goal. His prop is stopped, goes after it again. Played it on the wing. It's dumped out, but not out again. It went straight here, and shot. And it went wide, and the siren goes to end the first 10 minutes. The play goes right on, because they can't really hear what's going on. With the score, Canada 3 and the Soviets 2. This is game 6 from Moscow. Change of players. They're starting in on the last 10 minutes of the third period. They've changed in. Canada to the right. Soviets to the left. Canada leading 3-2. to two. And the Soviets ready for the face-off in the Canadian zone. On the face-off, the puck rolls to the corner. Park out there with Berkman, fielding it out. Berkman now plays it on the board. Henderson couldn't reach it. Mikulov comes from the side. He's taken out of the play. Bergman tapped it out to center ice. The Gansoff goes back to get it. Canada intercepts Ellis, playing it over to Clark, who couldn't recover. Again, the Soviet attack. And the pass is knocked down and played out to center ice. Ragolin playing it back at center ice. Volkov is dumped on the play. Harlamov playing it over on that far side. Put himself offside, but the play is knocked out at center. And two Soviets fell together. Ragolin going in, failed to get a shot. Hart dumped it into the corner. Ragolin covers his check, and they jam each other into the corner. Ronnie Ellis is a tremendous checker. He stayed right on his man all the way, took him into the boards, pinned right in against the boards to stop the play. But Ronnie Ellis, there isn't a better checker in the National Hockey League. And I know that all the opposition teams and coaches and managers respect Ellis's ability in a defensive capacity. They're changing lines out there. The Soviets pouring speed and fresh material at the Canadians. At the, at the uh, Canadians are hanging in there just as strong as ever. Three to two for Canada. Petrov got the puck against the board and it's docked out there very quickly to center ice. It's shot in again and is called for icing. I might mention right now that this is the only game of the four games from Moscow that will not be shown again. This is the only time you'll get a chance to see this game. It will not be on tonight. Gracie's on the left wing. Bill Esposito at center. Bernoyer on the right side. Bill White and Pat Stapleton playing up for the face-off in the Soviet zone. Petrov is facing off for the Soviet. Here's a chance. Here's Gracie's shot. Knocked down. He's trying it again. Goes in back to the net. Centered it. Intercepted. Mihailov starts down the left wing. That's better over the line. 
weaving a bit, made the pass to Petrov, the shot, right, stop that. A quick pass on the left wing. Goes out to center ice. Mihailov, 13, turning at his own blue line. Stop, gets turned around, didn't get out, and they go in there with a real battling performance there by Parisi. They jam into the corner. Parisi still fighting it out there. Has that puck, then tried to pass it. Still hangs on to it. Gets it back to Stapleton, who took the shot and hit a leg. They jam in back to the goal. Vasiliev passed right to the Canadian defenders there, and Parisi shot it in back to the net. Bill Esposito playing it back to the goal, into the corner. Bernoye tried to center it, and he was stopped there, spearing there with Petrov and Dennis Hull. Here's Dennis Hull getting a chance. He shoots a hot one. And Petrov and Dennis Hull nearly mixing it up again as they spear at each other. This is really the hardest fought game I think I've seen in years. Foster, I can't believe it. Down in that ice, it's just sheer war. These two teams are going at it. They're not sparing the lumber. They're not sparing the body. It is basically clean hockey, but is it tough down there in the ice? And Team Canada are giving by far, I feel, the best effort so far in this whole series. 7-14 left in the game. 3-2 for Canada. The puck goes to center ice. The guard is out there with a point. They shoot it back into the Soviet zone. Dennis Hull takes over and crossed the line, but they had a man away offside on the play. He'll bear. 7-0-1, left in the game. 3-2 for Canada. Puck goes back to the Soviet defense. Raglan shot it up the center. It's cleared over the line. Dennis Hull played it on the board, but not out. Rizal failed to get a shot. There's Dennis Hull and uh, Dryden went down low to cover that low drive. Rizal lost the puck. Dennis Hull on the board, just trying to clear it out. He did. Puck is at center ice. The check goal cleared over into the corner and back to the Canadian net. Dryden shot it over to Dennis Howe, who failed to clear it out. The check goal to Anderson. Anderson was stopped. Dennis Howe cleared it out. Gilbert over the far side. And now Henderson out there for Canada on a change of player. Soviet trying to get moving with a Pattern play stopped by Henderson. Henderson played it over on the right wing to Gilbert. Gilbert rags the puck, getting it over on this side. And a shot ahead. Now to Clark, who's on the edge of the Henderson right in. And he failed to get his shot. A long clearing pass. The bar goes over to try to cover. They're still in there. It's loose. Recovered. Shot over on the right side. Ellen tears down that right wing. Couldn't get a shot. Clark covers Lyshenko against the board. And Lyapkin has that puck for the Soviets. Only stopped by Clark to Henderson. Henderson gets ready. It's forced into the corner. Centers it. And it went right across the goal post. Bergman flipped it into the corner. Balsev is trying to bring it out. Clearing it over the line. Lyshenko at center. Got it over the line. A shot. Dryden shot that one. Tom Mikulov, and the beat is terrific, and the checking is harder than ever. With the score, Canada 3 and the Soviets 2. This is game 6 from Moscow. Jack made a brilliant save on that and fell to the ice. Well, Ellis has scored a lot of goals on that very shot. When Ronnie Ellis breaks out and he gets to the top of that circle, that's when he's starting to get set to shoot. And he almost fooled Tretiak, who only got his pad out there by a fraction. Complete change of players. A great effort, a great save. Ready for the face-off. The puck up, here's a shot, and just went wide in the net. From the corner, they jam in there. Puck is held there finally by Greasy. He's up there with Esposito and Cornwallier. 
With four minutes and 52 seconds, puck control becomes all important in the late stages of this game. Canada have to hold on to that puck as much as they can because the Soviets are going to go completely offensive as soon as they take possession. Already with Petrov and Esposito, a shot over the Canadian line. It goes into the corner. They fall. Petrov lands in the puck. Bergman laying it over on the left side. Reese found an opening. Bernoulli back to Phil Esposito. Phil Esposito going up over the line. Dribbled it into the corner. Reese went after it. Set it in front. And has got back into the corner. 4.25 left in the game, 3-2 for Canada. Reese fighting for it on that far side. It rolls off to the wing, recovered, carried over on this left side by Cornwallier, and it went into the crowd when it missed the, the netting. And the reserves keep pouring out here with 4 minutes and 10 seconds remaining Canada 3, USSR 2. Now Trichel going out there with Peter Mohamlich and Gilbert. Gilbert and Ellis have been alternating there off of Fredo back and forth there on that wing, getting frequent re relief. Puck goes over the line, Rattel rolling in on the defense. Here went Parker Mohamlich, and he failed to lob it high. Anderson cleared over on the far side to Yakushev. Yakushev is stopped at center ice. Another try with Anderson at center ice. It's still at center. Over the line for Anderson. It's Easter. He's stopped by Mahovlich. And Pat Stableton cleared the puck back to the Soviet zone. Luchenko, number three, turning with Yakushev on that far wing. Anderson coming in on the right wing. Lost it with a bad drop pass. Mahovlich played it out. Cleared over on that far wing. Bill White goes up into the corner. Center right in front and a deflected shot hits the side. The Soviet break out of center. Anderson was too far ahead on the pass. Canada bring it out to center. Ice, Rattel, Yakushev breaking it up. Yakushev got his pass over to Lyapkin. Over to Yakushev. Here's a two-man break in on the Canadian defense. And it's a good checking play there by Clark, who's out there now. Henderson on this wing. Henderson lobbed it over the line. Gilbert is still out there for Canada. He passes back to Stapleton. Stapleton takes his time, lobbed it to center ice. Now Ellis replaces Gilbert. And Ellis bumped into Mikulov right off the bat. Up is at the Canadian blue line. Ellis on the Soviet player. And there's going to be a holding penalty against Ellis at a very crucial time in the game. What happened there, Foster? Ellis comes onto the ice. He has to skate the width of the ice to get over onto his position. He hits Vikulov at center ice. He's a little over anxious to catch his winger. And he hangs on to him and he pulls him back and he takes the penalty. Ellis for holding at 17.39. And these will be desperate moments for Canada. Playing a man short. For Canada three. There's Ellis in the penalty box. This could be the longest two minutes of Ronnie Ellis' life sitting there. He's just in in purgatory sitting there because it's got to be sheer hell to be sitting there watching your teammates sit on the ice with two minutes and 21 seconds to go knowing that you only have a one goal lead. Three to two for Canada and the Soviet having the odd man advantage. Petrov got it back to the blue line. They're getting their pattern play. Luchenko played it over on the far side. Here's a shot. Wright made a dazzling save on that. Wide of the post by Inchu. The Canadians recover at center ice. They're back to their defense. Peter Mahomlich tapped it back to center ice. 
The Chenko ahead of center ice. Mikulov carried it over the line. Dumped the pass. Maltsev going into the corner. Back to the net. Passed it back to the blue line. Then to the corner. And it's stopped by Savard. It's just to down the ice. And it's called. Just why it's called, I don't know, because they have a man in the penalty box, but they hit him with a glove, apparently. 1.33 left in the game. 3-2 for Canada and Ellis. Hardly able to contain himself in the penalty box. Puck control, Foster, all important. I have to make a comment on that save that Dryden made. It was probably the best save of the night. He got that big pad out there and kicked out a shot that was labeled. From the face-off, the Soviets get the draw. The shot is wide, and Canada recover off the board, lob it into the Soviet bench. The Bard and the point on the Canadian defense. Parisi and Phil Esposito trying to kill off this penalty. And John Ferguson up again now, really applauding. And uh, Harry Sinden pacing back and forth behind the bench. The face-off with Slider comes to Lechenko with a blue line. Here's a shot. Oh, by the Afghan. And Bright got his glove on it. On the side. And it goes right down the ice. One thirteen left in the game. Three to two for Canada. Lechenko back of his own net. Played it up to the blue line. Every man up at center ice. Over the line for Liapkin. Playing it back. Now they're closing in with a pass that goes wide. Liapkin shoots it back to the net. Soviets right on the puck. Harlamov is stopped by Phil Esposito. He shoots it down the ice. 46 seconds left in the game. Lechenko staring over on the side. Coming against pass. Gets to the defense. Harlamov centered it. A roller went wide. They jam into the corner. And they shoot it down the ice. Ellis is getting ready to come back on again. The puck is on the far side. Soviet stop is centered by Park. Park goes after it. Keeps on going. Centered in front of Clark. And the Canadian team are full strength. 13 seconds left in the game. 3 to 2 for Canada. for the second time in the series and get right back into the competition. The, the Canadian players are in a frenzy as well as the fans. They're grabbing each other, hugging each other while the gold of Soviets are standing by and now they are going ahead and having the usual handshake. Foster Canada was 100 cents for the dollar tonight. They matched the Soviets all night. Stride for stride, and for one minute and 23 seconds, they skated away from the Soviets as they got the three goals they needed to win. You can't leave this game without saying what a job that Ken Dryden did. He played a magnificent game, and he made a save there in the last closing minute that just kept Canada and guaranteed them a win. But the final score, Canada 3 and the Soviets 2. This is game 6 from Moscow.